powerful name of Jesus Christ. scripture reading. Good morning. Today our scripture reading is coming from Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 through 11. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 through 11. Say amen when you have it. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That is the name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. 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 This is the word of God. I do believe it is true. The grass withers and the flowers fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Shalom. And our hymn. 
him today is all hail the power. Christ has been crowned Lord of all. He's Lord over our lives. Amen. On this morning, like we've done in previous weeks, we have a did you know moment. And so we want to welcome Sister Clancy. Shalom. My name is Myla Clancy, and I am a senior at Kirkwood High School. Thank you, Pastor Clark and the leadership team for the development I have gained through these speaking opportunities and participating in the youth ministry here at Shalom. Have you ever had to file an equal employment opportunity complaint for your discrimination on your job? If you have, did you know the software you use to file the complaint was created by a black woman, Dr. Janet Emerson Bushin? <laughs> Dr. Bushin was born in Ohio in 1957. In her early years, her family moved to Huntsville, Alabama. She graduated from the University of Houston with her legal studies degree and went to work for an insurance company processing claims related to EEO discrimination issues. She continued her education and received her law degree from Tulane and her PhD from the University of Southern California. In 1994, Dr. Bashin borrowed $5,000 from her mother to start her own company the Bashin Corporation, to investigate discrimination claims. 
As her company grew, she needed a more efficient way to input, access, and store information. She worked with her cousin to create a software program to do what she needed to do. In 2006, she was awarded a patent for this software, LinkLine, making her the first African-American woman to earn a web-based software patent. Her simple story gives us some simple principles. Don't give up and, don't, and ask for help. Regardless of your background, your thoughts and ideas have value. Find people who will support and encourage your vision. I am sure there were people telling her, you have a law degree or you have a doctorate in social work and you could be doing so much more. Based on her website, I am sure her answer to them was, I have always been passionate about equal opportunity and mutual respect and my fervor evolved into a business. So my question to you is, where will your passion lead you? Thank you. Hey man, come on, we can do a little better than that. Sister Myla, Clincy, her parents, the parents present in worship, where you at? Stand up, wave your hand so we can see you. They're on the parking lot. <laughs> Amen. We acknowledge them anyway. Wonderful job again. Wonderful job. <laughs> Wonderful job. Wonderful job. Mr. Ethel Bindham is going to come now and uh, bless us with political awareness. We are so grateful for the work that she does, not only in this church, but in this community. Amen. Good morning. To God be the glory. I'm going to say it again. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for all the wonderful things that he has done and is doing. Good morning and shalom. Thank you, Pastor. Before I say another word, I just want to take the time to thank all the wonderful volunteers that helped our voting event uh, make it a success on yesterday. Give yourself a hand, whether you served as a register, a poll worker, a poll watcher, or on our security team, we thank you. I have not received the official count yet, but what I do know is that we processed the highest number of voters here yesterday at Shalom out of four other polling places in St. Louis County. Yes, we did. But, but, but here's, stay standing. Because not only did we process the highest number out of four other polling places, Shalom, we processed over 600 voters on yesterday. Over 600, and our numbers will increase. The official count will be out on March 28th, but that doesn't include all of you who may have requested a mail-in ballot and mailed it in. Uh, you count as part of our Shalom numbers. So I'm just excited about what God is doing with us, through us, and for us. Amen. So, but but here's the thing. I need. It was it was it was a lot. You know, but here, I want you to get this piece of information to understand what went on yesterday. Because not a lot of people understood completely what this was all about. So in 2022, Republican Governor Mike Parsons, who is still our current governor, he's finishing up his term, praise the Lord, and signed, he signed House Bill 1878, which eliminated Missouri's state-run presidential preference primary. And so he designated that the party should do it, 
So I mentioned that the Republicans had theirs on March the 5th and Democrats had theirs on yesterday. And so it was up to the individual's parties to hold the primary to nominate the choice for president for each party. Okay, that's what went on yesterday. So Missouri Democrats did uh, seek to design a process that would encourage as much voter participation as possible by offering primary voters an option of in-person or mail-in. That's what took place yesterday. And because it was an election held by the Missouri Democratic Party, the process was somewhat different than maybe what you were used to. This was not a government-sponsored election. It was a party-sponsored election. So many, maybe of you never have participated in such, okay? It was the first time. So because it was a party-sponsored election, the process was just a little different. We didn't have to have ballot boxes with locks on them with police escorting us out. But we kept the integrity of the election. I want you to know that, okay? We didn't have to, we normally candidates can't come inside, but candidates were allowed inside on yesterday to be able to talk to people get their literature out if they were a Democratic candidate in the state of Missouri. So again, it was different or new, but not wrong. It's just new. So understand exactly what went on. And I'm happy to report again that the registers did what they needed to do in verifying voter information if not, everybody that wanted to vote got helped. And in some shape, fashion, or form, whether or not you were able to vote in the system, whether or not you dropped your mail-in ballot off, others were able to vote for a provisional, and in some way, you still will be counted, okay? Every ballot was turned over to the Missouri Democratic Party, and in no way were those ballots compromised. We followed the rules, and as a matter of fact, we raised the standards. So this is important for you to know. Lastly, I saw a few people, just really quick, I saw a few people with their current voter information card in their hand yesterday. Please don't get rid of that. This is for the April 2nd municipal elections, okay? So it has some very inf important information according to where you live. It's gonna give you some polling places where you can go and vote on the municipal issues. It's gonna give you options for different places throughout St. Louis County where you're still eligible to vote. It's gonna tell you uh, what your precinct is, your name, etc. but here's this. On the back is the sample ballot for where you live. Municipal elections are for Florissant, Jennings, you know, Maplewood, wherever you live. And this ballot is gonna be specific for where you live, okay? So you got all the information you need if you wanna vote on April 2nd in your municipal areas, amen? Okay, lastly, we did 11 voter registrations last week. Let's keep it up. Thank you, love you, and God bless. Hey, man, ain't nothing like being informed. Yes. As we transition to our prayer concerns, we ask for your patience on this morning we have an extensive list and so we do encourage you to get a completed copy as you leave on today and join us in interceding on behalf of our shalom church family members amen we do begin with praise reports uh, linda cobbs and stephen sharp dove are home from the hospital and we thank god for that 
as well as Lisa Nunley is recovering from a successful surgery. We have others who will, who are scheduled to have surgery. Uh, Leon Ledbetter and Jacqueline Coleman are scheduled to have surgeries on, on this week. Those yet in the hospital, Brenda Galmore, Beverly Tolliver, uh, we're yet praying with the Patton family for baby Rylan. And Sheila Young is yet in the hospital. We're praying uh, with her. She underwent a couple of procedures on last week, so we're lifting her up uh, in our prayers. For bereavement, Deborah Loggins, Shamika, and Michael Tucker finalized uh, their aunt on this week. Catherine Jameson in the passing of her uncle, Raymond Hawkins. Joe and Stephanie Elliott in the passing of their daughter-in-law, Casey Elliott of New York. Diane Dubb and Rose Thompson in the passing of their father, George Smith Jr. Then lastly, Timothy and Delandia Blue in the passing of their father, Oscar Blue Jr., who is the father-in-law of Sharnetta Blue. As always, we're praying with and for our pastor, his entire family, and the entire Shalom Church family. Our choir is going to ready our hearts for prayer. We'll be led in prayer following their presentation. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we acknowledge afresh that you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. 
truly, O God, there is none like you in all the earth, and certainly there is no one above you. You rule and you reign both now and forevermore over every situation and over every circumstance. In the midst of it all, you are God, and there is nothing and nobody greater than you. You are so great that you came down and made your dwelling among us, and being found in appearance as a man, you humbled yourself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. On this day, God, as we remember your triumphal entry into Jerusalem, we remember your example, not of worldly power, but power from on high, the power of love and humility, the power of submission and obedience to the will of the Father. And we pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that this mindset and attitude would be in us as it was in Christ Jesus. We confess, O oh God, that we have tried and we have missed the mark. And so we ask for your forgiveness. And we thank you for the blood of your Son that makes forgiveness possible, that grants us another chance to try and get it right. We thank you for this place called Shalom Church, this community of faith where we can come and be encouraged and edified by preaching, teaching, and praying, by testimony, and by the singing of Zion songs. We pray for our community at large. We ask for your blessings on our schools, our teachers, counselors, our children, God. We trust that you would be a hedge all around them. Continue to empower us by your Holy Spirit to be the builders that's needed in these perilous times. We plead the blood of Jesus over our children right now. We pray, oh God, that no weapon formed against them would prosper, that they would know that they're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We thank you for our pastor, Dr. Clark, for his vision and his love for you and your people. We pray you'd strengthen him and keep him and bless him with the blessing you see he stands in need of. We ask your continued blessings on Sister Clark and his entire family. God, you are so able for every family in this community of believers. God, we cast all our cares at your feet because your word says you care for us. Now, Father God, for the rest of this service, we pray that you would anoint us afresh, that if anyone is present who does not know you in the pardoning of their sins, that they will say yes to you on today and want to be saved. Father God, in all things, we're going to be mindful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, for truly you are the one who reigns. In Jesus' name, we pray and say thank you, God. Amen. Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord, it's good for us to be here on this day. Mark chapter 14, the first nine verses of Mark 14. New Living Translation is where I'm reading from. It was now two days before Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The leading priest and the teachers of religious law was still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the Passover celebration, they agreed or the people may riot. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor, so they scold her harshly, scold her harshly. But Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you and you can help them whenever you want to but you will not always have me. She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I tell you the truth, whenever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. This concludes our reading. This is the word of God. I believe it's true. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. You may be seated. Um, when, when love gives, when, when love when love gives. This is Palm Sunday. We celebrate on this Sunday Jesus' entry into Jerusalem before his arrest and trial, uh, even before his crucifixion. That Palm branches were waved and placed on the road 
before his donkey, before a cheering crowd. Palm Sunday sets the tone for Holy Week with its emphasis on the redeeming death of Jesus Christ that there was a lot of things that happened the last week of the life of Jesus, one of which is the anointing of Jesus at Bethany. Some form of this story, uh, brothers and sisters, is told in all four of the Gospels. Now, what might differ is the details that are involved in Luke and John the anointing of Jesus by the woman is before the triumphant entry where in Matthew and Mark the anointing of Jesus by the woman is after the triumphant entry into Jerusalem The time is two days before the Jewish feast of the Passover. That Passover is celebrated in Jerusalem. The number of people who made the annual pilgrimage for Passover was immense. At some time during this week, the number of people in Jerusalem was five times the normal population. That Passover is the commemoration of the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt. In Exodus 12 and 13, the blood on the doorpost would be the sign where any destructive plague would not touch the house when it was in, intended for the, Egypt, the Egyptians, that they were the intended target and not the Hebrews. However, Passover is not the only thing that is being observed. There is also a ploy by the chief priests and scribes looking for a way to arrest Jesus. We are taken aback to discover that at the end of the story, it's one of the disciples of Jesus, Judas, who becomes a part of the plan. He becomes a part of the ploy and he has agreed to turn Jesus over to them. In the beginning and ending of this story is about the arrest of Jesus, but that's not the story because this is not a single story. This is not what you call a single line there is a story going on within the story that makes this last week in the life of Jesus most interesting. That the story is about a woman who enters the house of Simon the leper carrying a long-necked alabaster box that she is moving with direction and purpose going directly to Jesus. As she breaks open the bottle and she pours the content on the head of Jesus, he is reclining at the table. The aroma fills the room and soon the scent was identified that this is pure noid. This is expensive perfume. 
this must be a special occasion. Now, this happened in the house of Simon the leper, or should I say the former leper, that leprosy is that infectious skin disease that keeps persons locked out of community. That there had to be some social spacing between the person who had it and others who came into contact with them. And if they are in Simon's house, then the leprosy is cured. Um, I would normally just run past that. <laughs> now some people, if you can imagine, would almost ask for his cleansing papers from uh, leprosy if they are to be in his house. Uh, so this is, this is Simon whose past included leprosy. And, and so we could really refer to him now as somebody who had leprosy but he doesn't have it anymore and this event takes place at the house of a former leprosy patient uh, and and Jesus is in his house this um this Simon who had leprosy. And now those who, that Jesus, his character, his reputation, his integrity was of such, there were some who didn't need to read Simon's papers. They would read Jesus. And if Jesus is in the house, uh, then it must be all right for the rest to be in the house. And, and then it dawned on me, as you well know, that Jesus has a habit of hanging out with ex-offenders. Uh, that uh, one of the precious moments in this setting is that uh, uh, Jesus hangs out with exes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> One of the things that got him in trouble is he hung out with the undesirables. Uh, he would never quite line up with those who wanted to pick people for him to associate with. Uh, but even on today, we can rejoice in knowing that we have company with Jesus because Jesus is responsible for our being able to say that I once was, but now I am. Um, uh, I won't comb the house and see how many people had a lifestyle that was like uh, a form of leprosy where people found you uh, contagious to the point where they didn't want to enter your space. I may be even talking to somebody where people have broadcast that you would never be anything, that you would never live up to your potential because of the home you come out of. Uh, your mom and them. Um, 
uh, that, uh, that you could never look the part or dress the part, uh, that your, your arrest record uh, uh, stood in the way of your ever becoming mainstream. Uh, that you had a battle with narcotics uh, that started off as pain pills and you messed around and got addicted to it and uh, and then you married an outlaw and, and I and I don't and I don't I don't mean the person's name last name was outlaw I mean that you 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 married you, you, yeah, that the people with whom you associate with said you could have done much better for yourself. And the list is long, the list is long, but here we are today in this room and those who are streaming with us that you bumped into Jesus and he turned you into an ex. Bumped into, yeah. There are so many people who don't like rehearsing their past because it's painful. Yes, and we understand all of that, but rest assured that if you need to talk about it because you're not running from it, you just don't want to talk about it that one of the things that we can say is that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to us. Yeah. That there are some things that we thought we could never overcome. That there are some people that we thought we would never be able to get out of our lives. And then Jesus, when he came back, he, he, has, he has the audacity not to just come by the house, he takes a seat in the house. And he, and he occupies all of that lonely space. He occupies all of that empty space. And so today we gather saying, if I, if I could ask God for anything, I would ask God for some more God. I would ask. Uh, uh, that God is so good. And this woman, this woman thought the same thing, that, that she saw the, the reality of Jesus and what he could do. And the circumstances of her life, whatever it was, uh, moved her to this place and space of being overwhelmed. And, and she broke this perfume jar and poured its content on his head. Or, or maybe she didn't just see what she needed, but she saw uh, through revelation what Jesus was going to be confronted with. Maybe she saw his incredible loneliness and suffering as he sat at the table and she couldn't help herself. And, and she did what she did. I, I doubt very seriously if anybody else in the room knew about the incredible loneliness that Jesus was facing as he is in the last week of his life, which moves me to say to uh, my brothers and sisters who are present on today that that whatever good deed that we would want to do for Jesus, we ought not let anything or anybody stand in the way of that. Um, that if, it's not even a if, it's our being made more aware of what Jesus has done for us. And sometimes we start to muffle our appreciation for him because we don't want to disturb people. We want people to think well of us 
And so we, we fall short in our hallelujahs. And thank you, Jesus. At that moment of revelation, at that moment of revelation, when it's being revealed uh, beyond the surface, just how good God is to us. Some of us have come to the place and point is at that moment that we just say, thank you, Jesus, or something like that. You know, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what we are, or what ground we're standing on, sanctuary or the public square. When we think about it, we just, oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, that, that's, the, that's the kind of spontaneity of praise that ought to accompany our worship wherever we are, that we, that we are not uh, inhibited by telling the Lord, thank you, even if it offends somebody. Not, not everybody is on the Lord's side now, not, every, not everybody. And so, and so you enter into this area of risk, uh, such as this woman did. This was a woman. Uh, uh, carrying this expensive punard, walking, walking through the party. Yes. Jesus is reclining at the table. Yes. The, the disciples are there who are somewhat chauvinistic yeah. along with others. And so you know that they would have a private conversation about this woman pouring this perfume yeah. on the person of Jesus. Yeah. But sometimes you just have to enter into that space when you know. No, I'm not talking about guesswork. I'm talking about when you know that it ain't been nobody but Jesus. When you, when you start to look at how your children have been all right. Yeah, have, 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 how, how you have always had food in the refrigerator. Where in the winter the heat is on. And, and in the summer, the air is blowing. I mean, every now and then when that comes across how we see and think, it, it, it ought to move you to a place of uh, unapologetic praise. Can I get you to turn to somebody and just tell them, I don't apologize for my thank you, Jesus. Y'all look behind you and tell somebody, I, I, I'm not here to apologize. That if I'm getting on your nerves, you got time to move. Yeah. If my saying thank you to the Lord Jesus gets on your nerves, then there, there are other seats where you can go. Because I'm going to fill this space with praise. Hallelujah. Uh, there gonna always be some critics. You, 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 you wouldn't think in the house where Jesus was that there would be people who would criticize a good deed. There are plenty of stuff to criticize, but when you're blessing the Lord Jesus, you wouldn't think that that would be a point of criticism, but it, but it was. Uh, that uh, uh, some of the protests came from um, unlikely sources. Uh, you would have thought it had been some of the other people in the house that was criticizing the woman for what they did for Jesus, but it was the disciples. Bre breaks my heart to say that. Uh, but... Uh, but it was the disciples, the perfume could have been sold and the money shared with the poor was one of the criticisms. Uh, when they said that, they really heightened the awareness of not just the poor, but why was this substance used on Jesus? If anybody should have been loving Jesus, it would have and could have and should have been the disciples. Uh, yeah, uh, that, you know, people that sometimes ought to praise him the most uh, 
are the ones that are sitting around looking at others uh, who choose to praise him. And then people with whom God has been so selective in the blessing that, that he's answered prayers and given us what we asked him for. We, we, we see other people praising him and we text each other with words like, now you know it don't take all of that. And, and, and so people, people who look like outsiders, like this woman, end up being extravagant toward Jesus when those of us who are closest to him, who never miss a Sunday, who are always in Bible study, who are in every ministry, find reason to complain when other people who we don't seek ought to know him as much as they do start to praise him at the level of where they've been lifted. Now obviously this lady has been lifted from something and she's in the house of somebody else who's been delivered from something. And when you're around deliverance, it just seems to me that your level of praise ought to be different. Help me go on and preach this. Help me preach it. Help me preach it. Find you somebody and say, really today, you, you don't know like I know. You don't know how good God has been to me. I know you see me, but you don't have a clue of the level of my deliverance. You don't have a clue how God has protected me and, and my family and has kept me danger seen and unseen. Hey! So there, uh, their, 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 their excuse, their excuse was birth out of their inactivity. Let me put it this way. So the woman embarrassed them. And so they started criticizing her act because it was her act, it was her action that embarrassed them. Her action exposed what they wasn't doing. That this woman was doing what they should have been doing. When she walked in the house, they should have been at his feet. And she being condemned for what they failed to do. Let, let, me, let me just say this, because I got to come to the table, that uh, uh, there are some people in the house that would want to put the brakes on your praise. They won't put the brakes on your praise because they say you do it every week. That every time you look up, there she go again. They, they don't know that you're praising him again because God has done it again. <laughs> hey! He, he done it this morning. Woke us up. We in our right mind. We got our health and strength. Uh, 
Je- Je- Jesus, Jesus responded. Jesus responded by, by, by just simply saying to them, the poor you're going to have with you always. I won't be here always. That the, the moment of your praise, your pointed praise, your focused praise is right now. Not next Sunday. Yeah. Not, not this evening. Yeah, not tomorrow. But, but, you, but you need to see reason why in the moment, right here and right now, why it's good for me to open my mouth and throw back my head and, and, and break the seal of my being so conservative in worship and let everybody know how good I know God is. Uh, yeah. So, and uh, yeah, while they was condemning her, Jesus was giving her a place of permanency in biblical literature. Yeah. Now, we don't even know her name. Yeah. But Jesus says, every time you tell this story, you're going to remember what she did. Yeah, and that she emptied her content. That which was most precious to her, she gave it to him. And if it's anything that we hold precious for ourselves, and, and so precious that the Lord ain't good enough to have it, we need to think about how we got it. Yeah, because everything we have, comes from the Lord. Yeah, and everything on earth belongs to the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yeah, the cattle on a thousand hill belongs to the Lord. You and I belong to the Lord. I remember when I gave my life to him. Yes, sir, yeah, I remember. I remember when I was baptized. Yeah, I remember that. that They took me down in the water and brought me back up and my name was changed. Yeah, he's a name changer. Not only will he fix your heart, but he'll change your name. He'll change how you walk. He'll change how you talk. He'll give you a new determination. I'm talking about this God. Let me get on out the way. Uh, uh, let me get out. See, so, so in Mark, the woman moved past all of her critics and blessed the Lord. Yeah. In Luke, there's a, a reason given the Lord had forgiven her much. Yeah. And met her at her place of pain. Yeah. And in John, Jesus turned her mourning into gladness. And so that was Mark, Luke, and John. What street you live on? What, 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 what do you have to get past today? Yeah, to say the reason why I want to praise him right now is because of. Help me finish that sentence. Turn to the people around you and just tell them the reason I'm getting ready to praise his holy name is because, and you fill in the blank. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And my praise is done in love. Yeah, because I'm trying to give back to God while the blood is running warm in my veins. I'm trying to give back to him at the level that he's blessed me. But I can't catch up with it. Because this week, yeah, yeah, he went to the cross. Yeah, yeah, he did. And he died. Didn't he die? Didn't he? Didn't he? Didn't he die? 
he bowed his head and died. They took him down and they put him in a barroom tomb. But three days later, he got up with all power, heaven and earth in his hand. And while he was, while he was dying on the, this is, this is a clock interpretation. All right. While, while he was dying on the cross between the two thieves, uh, they said, what fragrance is that? That, that, that the woman poured the pure nard on his head, getting him ready for the crucifixion. And in all of the pain that he was going through, he could still smell the touch of this woman's love. Listen, don't, don't be weary in well-doing. Yeah, and, and we can't never thank him enough. We can't never praise him enough. Yeah, he, yeah, that he, he inhibits I praise. He, he, that, uh, see, even in this service, as, as some of you still, when you think about what's happened today, on Wednesday, when you start to unpack some of this, you're going to start to praise him again. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm done. But the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endured yeah. to all generations. Yeah. He hadn't failed us yet. No, he keeps on blessing us. Yeah. You're right on, King Jesus. Yeah. You're right on, conquered King. Yeah. yeah, and so when he was riding in Jerusalem, you know, the, the critics start telling, you know, you need to be quiet. You need to be quiet. And then, and then it is said that if they should hold their peace, then the rocks are gonna cry out. Uh, tell somebody quickly, ain't no rock gonna cry out for. Couldn't hear me. <laughs> yeah.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Did we miss anybody? If you haven't been served, raise your hand. And it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. somebody present today that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to extend this invitation to Christian discipleship to you. You've never been baptized. You, you may even say I've been baptized but I know I need to be around other believers, baptized believers that share the same struggle that I share in life with my broken humanity. And if the Lord has spoke to you today and you know it's right to be in his church, and we've been praying for you and we ask that by faith you move in the direction of publicly accepting him. Yeah, we can keep singing that, this song here. It's mighty good for joining church. Yeah. Yeah. Reaches, reaches. Yes, it will. From day, From day to Thank you. Our ushers are coming. We want to 
worship and our giving. Amen. Uh, yeah, we want to bless the Lord on the day when I when I gifts. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. All of our guests, good to have you today. We are we are so much better when you're here with us. So we thank God for your presence on the day. We Yeah, when we laid down last night, if we laid down, and some of us may have fallen asleep in the chair or something. However we did it, the Lord woke us up and we're grateful. We're grateful for that. Yeah, so. Yeah, next time. It's offering time, Shalom. You may call the office at 314-653-2300. Drop off or mail your check to the church at 5491 North Highway 67, Florissant, Missouri, 63034. Through Realm via the church website at www.shalomccop.org. Or you may text SCCOP to 732. Thank you.